Swedish defense manufacturer Saab recently rolled out the A-26, a stealth-focused submarine it describes as the world's first fifth-generation submarine, designed to meet NATO's evolving multi-domain demands. Built for the Swedish Navy with an emphasis on shallow water stealth in the Baltic and long endurance patrols, the A-26 is pitched as a platform that blends acoustic discretion, modular payloads, and seabed operations with modern sensors and networking. So in today's video, we're taking a closer look at what the A-26 program is, how the design works, the capabilities Saab is claiming, and what this fifth generation label could mean for the future of undersea warfare. Let's dive in. The A-26, also known as the Blekinge class, is being built by Saab Kockums for Sweden's Defense Procurement Agency, or FMV. Two boats, HSMS Blekinge and HSMS Skona, are currently under construction at Karlskrona for the Royal Swedish Navy. In October 2025, Janes reported that FMV and Saab were updating the program plan as the design matures, with deliveries now expected in the early 2030s. Saab markets the A26 family in several sizes. Pelagic targets compact, coastal missions, oceanic aligns with Sweden's Baltic and North Sea profile, and oceanic extended range stretches endurance and payload for longer deployments. Sweden's two Blekinge class hulls sit in the oceanic bracket and use an evolved Stirling Air independent propulsion system to remain submerged for extended periods without snorkeling. The A-26 combines a low observable hull form, distributed raft-mounted machinery and signature management features Saab calls Ghost to reduce acoustic, magnetic, pressure, and infrared cues. The powertrain uses Stirling AIP alongside diesel-electric generation and batteries, a Swedish specialty refined over decades on the Gotland and Södermanland classes. Endurance numbers are not public in detail, but AIP is intended to add many days of submerged operation at low speed, which is central to Baltic stealth. Published open sources place the Blekinge class hull at roughly 66 meters in length and around 1,900 to 2,000 tons submerged, figures that fit the oceanic profile and are consistent with the payload and habitability Sweden is seeking. Internally, the A-26 is arranged around a modern combat system with digital consoles and open architecture integration, and it is designed to meet NATO interoperability standards for data links and mission planning. Saab's October 2025 sonar announcement highlighted a new comprehensive acoustic suite intended for future Swedish submarines, a pointer to the A-26's sensor roadmap even as individual processing chains remain classified. A defining A26 feature is the multi-mission portal, a 1.5-meter diameter lock integrated in the bow section between torpedo tubes. It supports lock-in, lock-out of divers, deployment and recovery of unmanned underwater vehicles, and the carriage of larger modular payloads like sensor packages or special operations equipment. Swedish and industry briefings have linked the portal to emergent seabed warfare tasks, including inspection and protection of subsea infrastructure and cable routes that have become a strategic focus in the Baltic and North Atlantic. The A-26 retains conventional armament, with 533mm heavy torpedo tubes for anti-ship and anti-submarine roles, and sources also point to the integration of Sweden's torpedo families. Saab has promoted the design's growth for future long-range strike options, but there has been no official Swedish declaration of a specific submarine-launched cruise missile for the Blekinge class. For now, the emphasis is quiet ISR, sea denial, and special operations support, with the portal providing flexibility beyond traditional tube-launched weapons. But how come Saab's claiming that this is the world's first fifth-generation submarine? 
Saab's messaging around fifth-generation centers on a fusion of stealth, payload modularity, and ISR. The company says a 26 boats will queue and share information with other Swedish and allied assets through modern C2 pipelines, while remaining optimized for the noisy, shallow water acoustics of the Baltic. The sonar selection points to a next-gen processing backbone, and Swedish Navy imagery of a 26's combat information center shows a high-density workstation layout consistent with multi-sensor fusion and UUV tasking. These elements underpin claims that the design contributes not just in the sea domain, but also to the broader information domain through persistent sensing and seabed interaction. With that said, the marketing language around fifth generation is not based on a universally accepted submarine taxonomy, so it should be read as Saab's positioning rather than a formal NATO classification. Despite the nomenclature, the A26 underscores three important trends. First, quiet AIP boats are evolving from coastal ambushers into networked ISR nodes with UUV racks and special operations access to the seabed. That is directly relevant in the Baltic, where pipelines and cables are high-value targets. Second, payload modularity is becoming as important as tube count, since UUVs and mission bays let crews switch from sea denial to sensor or infrastructure missions on short notice. Third, interoperability matters. Sweden's move into NATO means Blekinga-class boats will be expected to contribute to allied tasking and information sharing, and Saab is building that into the baseline. The fifth generation label is ultimately a claim, not a standard. What will validate it are sea trials and early fleet experience, acoustic performance in real Baltic conditions, reliable AIP endurance, seamless UUV operations through the portal, and clean integration with Swedish and NATO networks. If those boxes are ticked, the A26 will give Sweden a quiet, flexible submarine that can gather intelligence, threaten adversary shipping, and interact directly with the seabed where so many strategic assets now run. What do you think? Let us know in the comments below, and if you found this video insightful, make sure to give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for the latest defense news and analysis.